Okay, now that all the major machining operations are complete, it's time to work on some of the detail areas before I do the paint and body work. And so I've been making a list of things that I need to fix, and I thought I'd shoot a little video record too, it'd be easier to understand what I'm doing. Um, first thing is for the tilting head, you can see you can tilt it all the way that way with no problem. This way, the screw that I use to hold the rotating base in, it actually interferes with the body here. But I think I could just remove the washer, shorten things up in there. I'm going to take this apart in a minute, but I thought I'd take a video of it first before I do that. Another thing, so I'll take that apart and we'll see. I mean, worst case scenario is that I'll have to relieve the screw and a little bit of the body, but I think I can shorten things up. We'll see. The other thing I need to do, I definitely need to number and mark the degree marks on the rotating base. And part of that is going to be is orienting the this tool mounting bar in directly parallel axis with the front bar here. And so that and then marking towards this around you can see marking a scribing a line here somehow that will will um, be able to line up with the degree marks on the rotating base. So I do need to figure that out. As you can see, I've machined out the this part probably more than I really needed to. I was originally thinking of putting the degree marks down here and then just filing a notch in this piece. But the more I study and think about it, I'm kind of thinking I should put the degree marks up here and the stamps, there's more real estate to do that up there. And we'll see. Um, it won't be too hard to figure out something to put across here for the indexing mark. And I did leave a little extra room in between the rotating base and this part, the indicator part. But that'll have to happen. So that's a consideration. The other thing, and probably the first thing I'm going to do after I do some of this preliminary, is I do need to make the underneath catch, if you will, for the rocking lever. And if you recall when I was making this, I did drill and tap a couple of holes in here. And I machined this little base three quarter inches wide. So I just need to put this together and I'll probably make a little template out of some aluminum or something to try to bend it to the right shape. And I'll just use, probably just use this exact piece of three quarter inch steel to bend it into shape and to drill it and, and basically bolt it on there so it'll be a good fit. So that's some of the initial things that I'm thinking about and working on and hope to address here pretty soon. I just started by grinding away a little bit of that screw, the locking screw in the washer and I test fit it again and it almost has complete travel here. Um, you can see where it's hitting just a little bit there on the casting and rather than mess with the casting I think if I grind that screw down just a wee bit more and the blue part of the washer, I'm just hitting it with the bench grinder and quenching it. I think I'll be able to get it all with full travel. I already have to 30 degrees. Let me show you um, so I can easily get it past 30 degrees in that direction. And it's kind of unlikely that I'm ever going to have to grind something that this far, but the actual index mark is going to be about where the 30 is there if not beyond it so and that's all the original plans called for was to have 30 degrees of travel so i'm good as far as the travel goes but i can tell um you know if i grind a, a wee bit more off of there i might be able to get full travel so i'll bring you back and show you how that works okay that was a pretty easy fix or adjustment if you want to call it that I've marked the, roughly, with a big fat sharpie, where the zero mark is, and let me rotate this down, and you can see this is where, okay, the rotating table is interfering with this piece, and this thing's come into contact, and we're getting over 30 degrees, you know, it's like 32 degrees or so of travel, so I am good with that. I do not see making any additional modifications. I don't, I've never ground any kind of end mill or anything that needed a 30 degree cut on it. So I think that part is solved. I'm pretty happy about that. 
and now it's on. I think the next thing I'm going to do is fabricate the little underarm mount. I'll make a mock-up and fabricate that for the rocking lever. Here I've taken a piece of thin aluminum. It's one inch wide, which is wider than I'm going to use for my steel final piece. But it'll, I've made some test bends and so forth. I didn't drill any holes in it yet because I don't really need to. But I just wanted to get an overall outline for the, the shape of the item for the lower control arm, if you will. The whole purpose of this thing is this this assembly, especially when there's a tool he, tool holder on there, is, um, it's very heavy. And there's nothing to keep it from rocking backwards. If you were, And part of the whole science of, of, of tr uh, cutting end mills, sharpening end mills, is rocking them back and forth so you can rock them across the face of the grinding stone. And you just it's surprising that the design didn't have something in there as a bottom catch, like a safety catch. So that's what this will be. The The idea for this was covered in the um, very much improved corn uh, article series that was in one of the American magazines. I think it was Home Shop Machinist. I'll, I'll touch on that later. Well, in case my prior description was not clear enough, here is the actual semi-finished piece that I'm getting ready to cut it off right here where this mark is but I've got it drilled and formed and I think it's going to fit good. I'll bring you back and show you what it looks like. And here's the bottom safety strap if you will whatever you want to call it installed. Not very pretty at this point. I did round the edges. I cut it a little bit longer than my template and I'm at this point I'm really glad that I haven't glued the or loctited the rear bar into place. So I can just slide it. If I had my hands-free camera, I would do that all at once, but I'll, I'm going to set the camera down, slide that tube out of the way, and then show you how the rocking lever works with this thing, the, the safety part in place. And also, now it's nice because I can, if I have to fine-tune the bending of it a little bit, it'd be easy to do. Yeah, I got it in place, and so you can see what it, its purpose now. I am going to have to bend it up a good bit because that's that sits too ridiculously high. So probably three eighths to a half of an inch. This needs to be close. The screw part, micrometer screw part of the rocking lever needs to be close to the back bar. So I'll just flatten that bend out a little bit and check it again. Okay, I might make this a little prettier, but what the shape is good, the fit is good now. And the whole idea is that this the rocking lever can go all the way down. I've jacked the back the screw out all the way, so and it can make contact there, and it's not touching the the base here, the wooden base that I have for it. So that's satisfactory, and it'll be a good fit. And it's the nice thing is uh, part of the reason I went ahead and used the strap steel like this is if in the practice of using the tool. I decide I want to reduce the amount of gap clearance here. I can bend this piece of steel very easily and adjust that. So, all right, that's two things off the list anyway. Now I got the, the rotating and I got the lower base there. I think what I'm going to do next is take the vertical pole, vertical, I forget what you call it out, but take the motor off and all that stuff so that I can really focus on this thing and this this assembly here is once this is squared away then there'd be really no reason for me not to finish up like do the paint and body work on the base cast iron pieces and including this and then I, I could Loctite that back bar in Loctite that in and put the stamp the numbers into the thimble and put the whole front bar assembly together with this and we'd be in really good shape. I mean, the rest of it would just be the, the paint and body work on the tool holders and the, the wheel head itself. So I think that's kind of my next thing. But before I get too carried away, I'm going to, I'm thinking I'm going to get busy on the numbers here, stamping the, the degree marks, because I have the rotary table on the mill right now. Not quite sure how I'm going to do this. I might put this in the 5C chuck and, um, I've got that spindex. I could use the spindex as well. So I'm going to have to think about that a little bit. One more thing I got done. I think what I'll do is publish this video 
as my weekly update. It'll be a lot shorter than all of mine, but it's kind of cool to see what I'm talking about with the extra work, the detail work. But I, what I did, just did, I cut off, I loosened, I cut off the, the excess of my draw bar. And what I did, I took it out, I loosened the screw and backed it off so that I wouldn't scar up my nice aluminum nut or hand wheel with the um, with the hacksaw blade. I was tempted just to hack it off, but I didn't want to do that. So then I ground it smooth and tapped it back into place. And now just testing it again, just putting it in there. And I decided to do that since I've pretty much figured I'm not going to buy one of those uh, belt guards, at least not right now anyway. So I didn't really need the extra draw bar length. But I think that's a pretty good start. I, I've had a very busy week. Um, no excuses, but um, just had time to cipher on it a little bit during the week and then come out and do some things today, Saturday. So I'll make this the last segment here, publish a real short video for you this week. And as I mentioned, the next things probably will do, I'll probably figure out a setup for degreeing the, the rotating base. That's kind of the next major challenge. And once that's done, I mean, um, really can I'll, I'll work on fitting some of the, the ball handles and so forth but really paint and body and I am anxious to get the base loctited together and and have that you know really like something finished so thanks again everybody if you enjoyed this little segment then give me a thumbs up please welcome again to the new subscribers and hopefully we'll finish up the corn journey here about a year from the time we started it thanks everybody I appreciate you